Well, the program is at Cornell that I'm the art director to is a, a distant learning program. So we have about 6,000 um, prisoners, you know, six to ten, you know, at various, that are participating in the projects. And so what do we do is we we send out a general newsletter uh, in the spring or winter and summer and it publishes artwork of prisoners, uh, essays, poems, and then within that we offer courses that they can have through the mail. Chess, journal writing, poetry, math, art that I do, psychology. Psych psychology is a really big field, you know, everybody wants to learn about themselves. Uh, and then we send over the next six months after the general uh, newsletter goes out, we, they have to reply and say which courses they want, and then we send out the packets. Now the letters and the letters that I make for the, uh, the, uh, of the animals, uh, excuse me, um, are letters that accompany this thing and the materials that they send. So I don't use, you know, the, the journals that they send to us are all ar archived. Um, the poetry we archive, the uh, artwork is all preserved. And so these are the letters that are signing up for a program. And often they're very, uh, you know, revealing. You know, it's like, I want to be in your program. I'm so bored. I've been here since I was 14 years of age. And, you know, they're very touching. At the same time, if we were to, what we had traditionally done is recycle them, just put into recycling, and then they became, you know, like toilet paper or whatever they are. And so if we were to save them, we wouldn't leave, need the state of New York to save all these letters. And then after a while, I thought, well, you know, maybe we can do something with the letters, you know, that we're going to throw out, recycle, whatever it was. And, I, and I'm not a conceptual artist, so I didn't want to, like, just take the letters and just put them in a big bar container and say, oh, this is prison and something like that, because that's not what I'm about. And how they presented this show in terms of the letters at the end you know, worked well because I don't necessarily want, I want the sculpture to stand alone and that, you know, that they are made out of prisoner letters just becomes another layer of, you know, experience. And so then I started to, I had first done bronze casting and then I just transferred the skills from bronze casting um, to paper casting and so then I became this the paper casting. Thank you so much. But everything is archived. Nobody has been like disrespected in terms of whatever materials they send to us, we, we preserve. But every letter is read, every letter is answered, um, if not personally by me, because we get like so many letters um, by students or the director or the people who are working the program. Well, let's see. I think everything begins with one's family. So my family, because of, uh, I guess, mental health issues, um, having too many children and not enough money, my family has always been, uh, growing up, we were always on the periphery of any kind of, you know, we weren't, we weren't part of the middle class, we weren't part of the working class. We weren't part of, you know, this, that, and the other, and we were always, my parents were very unsettled and very, um, you know, they had mental health issues, I guess. So I think that, you know, my, I think that when I was about four or five, my father had um, gambled away all our money. And I think as a child, that doesn't really bother you, you know, the fact that, you know, we lost totally everything, you know, it's not a big thing, you know, you have a house, you don't have a house, you have money, you don't have a money, you know, big deal, you know, as long as you're having fun. 
But I can see that, and I see, see it in my brothers and sisters, that you don't care about the lack of things you have. You care about the fact that your parents are unhappy, um, that they're sad. You know, you'll be happy if your parents are happy. You'll be sad if your parents are sad. And so I think that instilled in all of us a sense of rescuing people. Um, my, pa my siblings are, you know, if you ever get lost in the backwoods, you know, call John because, you know, they work for the Park Service, they're in search and rescue, they're in firefighting. They're great rescuers and they do it very compassionately. I don't know. I think that one of the things that I was cognizant at the sort of like, because I worked on this project partially in, you know, I had a lot of the work finished before the pandemic and then I some. And I thought it was really important for me to create things that um, didn't play mind games with people. I just wanted a sense of uh, wonderment that it would appeal to um, kids, adults, people who never darkened the door of an art museum. And that that was, you know, important. Um, I think that it was important to me, and whether I would do it differently, I think I'm, I might have been that um, didn't want to preach to anybody. You know, people had enough restrictions on them. You don't want to, I don't like to preach to people anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, well, I don't like to consider myself an activist because I think with activism you get involved with problem identification and problem solving and I feel that's a certain amount of hubris in that. I did, when I go into prisons I don't really want to change anybody you know and I feel like when people come into my art class you know I, and I sort of tell them you get to be who you know if you're a murderer you're a murderer if you're a rapist you're a rapist you know but in my class you're going to be an artist you know, and that's all that matters. All I'm doing is transferring my skills to you, and then what you do with that is your own business. It's like teaching someone to ride a bike. You know, I'm gonna teach you how to ride the bike, and if you wanted to use it for good, use it for good. If you want to use it for bad, use it. I'm a nice person, so I don't want you to do anything bad, but it's your decision. And that's what I think about, you know, I don't like people saying to me, this is the way it should be. Well, how do you know what the hell it should be? And I think that if we just stop asking for change and engaging with people, I say, that's what I want to do when I go to prison. I don't want to ask anything from you. I just want to get to know you. And let's have a dialogue about art. And if that affects us differently, that's good. If it, I mean, inevitably, you know, you meet somebody and you have an intense conversation, it's going to change somebody. But I don't have to worry about that. That happens. Well, when I started this, the sculpture part, um, you know, well, not the sculpture, obviously it's sculpture, um, I started out as a bronze caster, so that's why a lot of things on the second floor are bronze. And then when I got larger, I started with the six-foot bird, and I actually cast that first in bronze, and I thought, oh, this is so heavy. <laughs> Who wants to be carrying this around? And then I taught myself how to paper cast, and then I cast the bird into paper. Um, but I had cast it first in bronze, and now seven pieces of, you know, because you do it in pieces, I actually want to go back and finish that piece and finish working and, you know, welding it together and cast it into bronze. I feel like I, there's a certain amount of retreat that I want to make into my studio. I feel like I just want to make, I, I just want to make beautiful things. <laughs> Uh, I just want to get involved with, um, 
actually, I, I, I've done a lot of sculpture for the last three years, and now I've been spend, spending a lot of time painting. So I want to do that. With the project, with the prisoners, I just want to renew, you know, we've been kicked out of Cornell for COVID, and so I just want to get back and start doing the projects that I did with the students that connect with the prisons, prisoners, which was very effective the year before pan, uh, the pandemic came around.